Hi, I'm Dr. T, and I'm a pediatrician. On Ask Dr. T, I answer health questions from teens. Questions ranging from safe sex, to self-love, to questions about body parts. Let's get this episode started. All right, I'm on to part two of vaginal anatomy questions. Question number one. Is it normal to get pimples on your vagina? And if so, how do you get rid of them? So um, I wanna first talk about the term vagina. And vagina refers to the canal that leads to the cervix and the uterus. The vulva is the area surrounding the vagina. And so when you say pimples on your vagina, I'm going to guess that you probably mean on your vulva, so the skin surrounding your vagina and there are a few different things that it could be. It's tough for me to say exactly what those pimples are, but they could be ingrown hairs that you get from shaving, or razor bumps or razor burn that you get from shaving, or fortis spots, which are basically little sweat glands. And so for ingrown hairs, those will be kind of like pimples, but they have a hair inside of them. They can get really red, tender, and they generally grow as the hair kind of accumulates under the skin. Uh, and so what I would recommend if you think it's ingrown hairs, do a good soak in the bathtub a couple of times a day. And moisturizing in that water will help kind of loosen up the skin and help that hair kind of break free from the, from the underneath the skin where it's trapped. If it's razor burn, and I talked about this on the last uh, episode, First is good shaving technique if you're shaving down there. Uh, fresh razor, soaps when you're in the bath or shower, shaving with the direction of hair growth and applying moisturizer afterward. If you still do those and you still get razor burn, it's okay. You can apply a low dose steroid ointment a couple of times a day for a couple of days and that should kind of help with the redness and the itchiness. Um, and then the last thing, fortis spots. So those happen too all body types, penises, testicles, and the labia get these little sweat glands that grow down there. And they generally look like whiteheads or little white bumps underneath the skin. Totally normal. Nothing really to do about them, but they're, again, found in so many bodies and it's not that big of a deal. Um, sometimes they get better with time and sometimes they don't, but they're nothing to worry about. Question number two. Do you have any advice for painful sex or being afraid that my vagina is too small? I don't even like using tampons. Is this something I should be worried about? Okay. I would guess that most people, before they have any sort of intercourse or intimacy, are pretty darn nervous about it. And having a penis comes with its own set of concerns and having a vagina comes with its own set of concerns. And so, my recommendations and advice for you really come from a both a professional and a personal stance, okay? So first what I would recommend is make sure when you are having intercourse, and in this case I'm talking about penis to vagina sex, make sure it's with someone that you trust because if you have a vagina, there will probably be some pain maybe some bleeding. It might be fantastic, and this isn't even worth worrying about, but a lot of people do have some pain and bleeding. And you want that to be with someone who you trust and can tell them in the moment if things are too painful, or make sure you have a towel underneath you, because again, it is, it's a very intimate and vulnerable experience. And so that's my first tip. The second tip, know that the first time might not be perfect. Probably won't be perfect. And that's okay. I think the issue a lot of people get into is that they think the first time is going to be perfect and something goes wrong. The penis doesn't stay erect. It's really hard to penetrate the vagina. There's lots of bleeding. It hurts. And you think, oh my gosh, sex is always going to be like this. And it's not. So just know that after the first few times, things can get better and usually get a lot better. So don't think the first time represents your whole sex life. It really doesn't. Okay. So just know going into it, all right, this might not be perfect and that's okay. 
It's not supposed to be perfect, but it is pretty intimate and it should be with someone that you trust. Third, lube. Lube is going to be your friend, okay? So there are kind of a few different things that contribute to with someone with a vagina having a more difficult first time with penetration. Hymen, extra hymen tissue, hymen tearing, certainly can be painful, a little bit bloody, so making sure that there's lube on board can help at least with easing of the insertion of the penis. Second, vaginal tension. So anytime we're nervous, our muscles kind of tense up, same thing happens in the vaginal area, and that can lead to more painful intercourse. So what I would recommend is trying to relax, maybe uh, a little extra foreplay in there, extra arousal will cause more lubrication, natural lubrication as well, but relaxing will help also relax those vaginal walls. And then third, dryness. So dryness contributes to painful penetration. So all three of these situations, lube is going to be your friend. And then also don't forget the foreplay. And um, that's about it. But again, first time, not gonna be perfect, but it can be memorable in a very good way, okay? Question number three, I've had sex many times, but it always hurts. I looked and my vaginal opening is very small. Is that normal? So first of all, um, the vagina is what we would call a potential space. So um, when there's nothing in it, it's just flat against itself and it's not open or anything. But when anything is inserted, whether that's a tampon or a menstrual cup or a finger or a penis, then it expands, okay? So looking at it, you shouldn't see, you're not gonna see a larger hole. What you might be seeing, and this is for you in particular, I suspect that because you've had sex multiple times, your hymen has probably stretched and torn sufficiently. So I would doubt that it's your hymen that's the issue. It's possible, but I, I would suspect what's more likely is going to be some tense vaginal muscles or uh, poor lubrication. So in both of these situations, um, I'm going to recommend, first of all, try to break that cycle of, okay, sex is always painful, this time it's gonna be painful. Approach your next time with the most hopeful, optimistic view, this time it's gonna be the more you focus on how bad past experiences have been, then the more likely you're going to cause unintentionally your vaginal muscles to kind of tighten up and it also reduces some of the lubrication. And so what I would recommend again is just trying to relax, view this as a brand new experience and hope for the best. Also, do lots of foreplay, okay? Foreplay is gonna help, again, loosen things up, cause some natural lubrication, as well as then the other thing that it could be is dryness and not enough arousal or being nervous about things can actually contribute to vaginal dryness. And so that's gonna make the friction of sex painful. So foreplay and lube are gonna be my recommendations for you and hoping for the best every time. Question number four. I had vaginal yeast, so I took metronidazole. I'm now washing daily with water, but in the last two days it started burning. What's happening? So um, it's possible that your skin is still a little sensitive after your yeast infection. It can really irritate the skin and make things really raw, and it can take a few days to kind of calm down. That said, don't wash in the vagina, if that's what you're talking about. You can still wash around the area using a gentle soap, something that doesn't smell, I like Dove, um, but don't scrub inside the vagina. That can actually throw things off again. So if you have been scrubbing inside the vagina, stop, and then if things don't get better, you might need to check in with a doctor. Otherwise, if you're talking about sensitivity just of the vulva and the area where you're washing, give it a couple of days, see if everything calms down, 
and again it might be we're talking to the doctor again if things don't improve but I suspect it's just your skin sort of healing up after that yeast infection uh, but don't scrub inside the, the vagina at all ever not necessary and then question number five is it normal that I don't feel anything on my vagina is there a way I can fix it I don't feel anything at all when introducing something not even masturbating I can only feel something stimulating my clitoris believe it or not you are not alone this is actually quite common and pretty darn normal the fact is that not everybody has vaginal sensitivity or gets pleasure from vaginal penetration the statistic that I usually cite is somewhere around 25% of those with vaginas actually report the ability to orgasm with vaginal penetration alone so that's one in four which means everyone else needs either extra stimulation like the clitoris or requires exclusively the clitoris so you have a couple of different areas of potential pleasure and arousal centers if you will um, and for the majority of people the clitoris is going to be the go-to place don't be discouraged a lot of people it's sort of a myth that oh the vagina is all it takes and all it takes is insertion and there's a g-spot and all of these things they've been studied extensively but the fact is that the majority of people require extra stimulation to achieve sexual arousal and orgasm outside of the vagina and that is okay uh, I would encourage you while you're if you're alone um, without a partner continue to explore and discover what things make you feel good and if you do have a partner work on communication and sort of rerouting to doing some other things that also feel good but it's okay there's nothing wrong with you you're actually pretty darn normal okay so that wraps up round two of vaginal and vulva anatomy questions and remember if you have a question for ask dr t you can either respond in this video or submit through my website askdrt.net